Hi, welcome to The Collectors. I'm Kent Lund, your host. Today we have a unique opportunity. We're visiting Detroit's best kept secret, and that is early automotive illustrations that have been saved by a collector. His name is Jim Secreto, and he's my guest today, next on The Collectors. Jim, thanks for having us here today uh, to see these illustrations. We're, we are, and my audience is excited. What do we got here, Jim? What's this? Well, thank you for coming, and I'm excited to have you because this is the uh, probably the first time I'm going to show the collection. And uh, what I have here is, like you said in the intro, one of the best kept secrets about Detroit. This is the advertising that was produced in the 50s, 60s, and 70s when the automobile companies were at their strength, the big three. Detroit was the center of uh, activity. activity, and Detroit was also the capital for producing the ads. They did over 85%. All the ad agencies were here. All the ad agencies were here, and what I've taken over 30 years to do, or many decades, is I've acquired uh, different pieces of art that represents Detroit ever, advertising Detroit style. And what we have here is the most famous ones, which are the Fitz and Vans, and they were the uh, company, they were the two artists from Connecticut that painted Pontiac from 59 to 71, and they did over 700 illustrations during that period. So they, they made their living Total living from that, and they were yes. busy tw twelve months of the year. I'm yes, sure. yes, and yeah. they were they were exclusive to Pontiac. They had a direct uh, d direct relationship with the client, and their work is the most iconic because it was signed and it was a consistent look. That's right. And one of the artists did the vehicles. He painted the vehicles. That was Fitzpatrick, which is so beautifully done. It looks photographic. The yes. reflections are perfect. And then who did the, his partner did the background. Van Kaufman did the uh, backgrounds. So they were a team, which was common back then. And uh, they became called uh, Fitz and Van or AVK. And th these are th these are muscle cars here, and these are the most sought after because of the oh, vehicle. Yeah. This looks like '68 GTO. It's a this is a correct. That's a '68. It GTO. might have the Endura bumper, which was yes, new at the time. Yes, and this is the. Uh, uh, it's a Trans Am, I think, and yep, it's a that's 70. a Trans Am. Yep, 70 yeah, Trans Am. Yeah, and this is one of the better ones, I feel, because of the lighting. It's low light. It's coming across. It's beautiful. And this is one of the first ones. This is, uh, in 1959, the introduction of Wide Track. And this is all original, hand-painted. And this is done in uh, of a background in Chicago. And this was... Uh, uh, Ben Kaufman painted the background, and uh, Fitzpatrick painted the car, and this is the uh, beginning of the campaign. And in this campaign, too, by the way, all the catalog literature, which in those days you might have a 70-page catalog, right? and then all the advertising, and especially when they start talking about wide track, yes. which Pontiac owned, yes. the term wide track, that's why it would take them 12 months to paint all these paintings. Right. Right, and other companies at the time might have been doing photography, but it was still in its infancy. It was, photography was was wasn't as dominant until the mid '60s. Exactly. Okay. But but the, the the these fits and vans or uh, have become the most iconic Detroit advertising. Yeah, absolutely. Because they were consistent over an 11 year period. So. Uh, when, when outside of the Detroit advertising community, this is the most recognizable car advertising from that period. Excellent. All right, we'll go to the next. So, Jim, now we have a couple more fits and vans here. What yes. can you tell me about this one? Well, this is, again, the beginning. This is uh, the Bonneville. This is that wide track period. Uh, this is a national ad. Appeared in all that like Life, Look magazine, and this is the exaggeration of a car to the extreme. It's wide, the wide track, stretched long. long. Yeah, it's 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 moving. It's got action. This is early on in the campaign, so uh, it was. Uh, it's a rare one because uh, it's. Uh, let's see, it's. Um, 
uh, it's a catalog, I think, but it's just the exaggeration here is, is so Detroit. This is when they were stretching cars to make them long and lean. Right. This right. is a prime example. Where here, this is an extremely rare example of uh, Fitz and Van style. This is all blue, it's monochromatic. And it's got these, this, this only happened in a little few features. edges, little features, that's what they were. But this was a, two, uh, this was a very famous uh, car for racing. This was a race car model. And uh, this is a series that won the New York Art Directors for illustration in that year. And that was 1962. And there were, I think, three or four of these. And uh, this is one of them. And uh, it's one of my favorites because uh, it's just uh, such a monochromatic picture. And it's so well executed. Oh, it's really handsome. Now, this is also, this is a time when the factories to be in stock car racing, they had to pick one of the models that they made to turn into what would be the best as a stock car racer. Right. And this is a Bonneville, and I'm sure that they obviously modified it tremendously to be racing. Yes, yes. But um, this is a, either a catalog or a national ad, probably. Yeah, this was a national ad, but you can see here it offered a tack. It offered a four-speed, and these hubcaps are, are what makes uh, it a very rare. These are a certain type of hubcaps. Yeah, they're, I think they're called nine-bolt finned, right. finned wheels, yeah. and they're but very these special. But were, these were the features that set this car apart from the other uh, models. Well, yeah, this is where they, I believe Pontiac was saying here, we have standard models, right. but this is for the young guy right. or young gal who wants a sports car. So we got a stick shift, we got right. cool wheels. These were options right. that you ordered. As you know, nowadays, your car comes yeah. with just about everything. And this is an interesting because this is car is exaggerated uh, to, the, to the point of almost ridiculous, where this is more in line. The hood is stretched, but they got the car under control. So yeah, this, this, to me, is the, the ultimate classic uh, automotive illustration. And Jim, uh, how did you come about the Fitz and Van part of your collection? Oh, it was... Uh, I was very fortunate because I was, I had the support of the community and by that I mean the old guard, they respected that I appreciated this and I was more of a, a collector rather than a, a, someone that was didn't appreciate it so it was piece by piece and I would get a call and, and they would, would come hear up, about you they would hear about, about me yeah. or they would say Jim you should call so-and-so or this person may have one so it was back in the day before there was an internet so it was like we talked about earlier piece by piece writing was, letters writing letters making phone, calls. making phone calls getting pictures waiting and so on pins and needles and pins and needles and it was one by one and each piece was uh, one by one so I don't think you could have amassed this type of a collection if you didn't have the support of the community and really, if you weren't in Detroit. Yes, this, this is definitely a Detroit uh, collection, and that's, that was the secret. Uh, I don't think anyone outside of Detroit actually knew that this, was, this amount of work was coming from a central area. And how many paintings a year, do you think? Or how, how uh, well, their total there? career, they did over 710. Okay. That was car, uh, advertising and collateral catalogs. I don't like to talk about co uh, cost too much. But does, do you have any idea what they were paid to do a painting like this? Uh, back in the, the day, two, yes. yeah, I, I think it was about 2500 Okay. Or, well, or, or the old saying was, paint a car, buy a car. Okay, same, same, same equal thing. Equal in price, yeah. Right. Well, and 2500 in 1962 or three was... Quite uh, a bit of money. Yes, yeah. yeah. All right, great. Thank, thank you. Now we got to go to the next one. Yeah. Now, Jim, you wanted to bring up the, a couple of unique pieces, and, and this is a, a multi-vehicle illustration. Right, right, which is I extremely rare because the, uh, you know, it's two for one, but it's usually a, a, a double-page spread, and a multi-car picture, which is what these are called, are, done, are extremely hard to do because the, both cars have to look good and they have to look like stars, and that's a very difficult assignment. This is an extraordinary Fitz and Van because of it being a night scene with a black car, 
This is a, this is a beautiful illustration of of a timeless period, and it, it's one of their better, uh, in my opinion, better examples of a two car. They didn't do many because the client didn't do it, but these are featuring a convertible and a and a hard top. But this is a beautiful example of light control, oh, uh, yeah. a white and black car. This is one of the most difficult pictures because of what you're dealing with. You're dealing with light. A white car, a black car, extremely large, chrome. So this is this is one of their when Fitz and Van were at their best. And and I, I well, in laying out something like this, a big consideration they have to take is where's the gutter in that magazine? Right. Where's that gutter going to go through the car? Right? And, it's, and the gutter is right here in that dark spot. Exactly. Right. There, right. Yeah. Exactly. Now what I want to point out is Fitz and Van are the most recognizable, but they were not necessarily the okay. only artists. And, and this is another fine example of a multi-car done by Howard Rogers of Graphic House. In, in Detroit. Graphic in Detroit. House. It's a major studio, did a lot of work. But this is very painterly, uh, very difficult to do. The gesturing of the people, the cars are dominant, the cars are bright uh, with, you know, And sparkle. the cars are the hero, for car, sure. In Detroit advertising, the car is hero. Mm -hmm. But this artist was able to incur incorporate a lifestyle, uh, flow, movement. It's just a beautiful, beautiful example. It is. And this is this is one of the better uh, pieces of art. And it's a three car, which is extremely rare. rare. Right. Yeah, because it doesn't, you can't get a really close look at any of the cars, but, right. it, but it says we make three cars. Right. We make a wagon, a four door, and a two door, right. a convertible. Yes. And, so it and says it all. It's a full line picture, is what it's called. Yes. And this, this is a prime example of the level of craftsmanship and artistry that Detroit had to offer. This is just one of many artists that were equal of this talent. And I, I'm sure that some foreign car companies would come to Detroit to have this done. Uh, not not in this period. They weren't that okay. strong. This okay. was in, this is in the '60s, so it hadn't it material yet. But they did come, but it was still dominant by Detroit. Got it. That's why the secret is this was all done in Detroit. Got it. That's a handsome piece. A beautiful piece. Thank you. We'll go to another yeah, one now. All right, Jim. You want to show us a, a couple examples here of the same car company in different approaches, right? to that particular advertising campaign. Yeah, and also this is uh, Detroit at its finest. Okay. Uh, Detroit had the pool of talent uh, that was un unapproachable anywhere in the world. These artists were sheet metal people uh, and they could perform uh, put a shine on a car and make make the car come alive like this John Ball is, is a prime example of an artist in total control of his media because you could see he has the reflections in the of the building next to it you can see right in here he has the pavement in there and 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 this this car is engineering correct so the detail on this is superb and this is a this is probably one of the finest examples of pure car illustration. And this is at a point in the in the, in the late '60s, early '70s, that the artist was competing with photography to show that they could manufacture the same look as a picture. And so this is all I'm calling it a, almost approach to photorealism in terms of illustration. And the beauty of this is you could see how he stroked his paintings to get all that. And I left that in there primarily to show the viewer how much work and talent went in there. Yeah, he's shaping his brush before he brings it to the car. Yes. And also the important thing here is is to note that he's painting the car because the client, that's what they want. That's right. what they care about. Right. But this is going to be stripped into or dropped into yeah. a city scene. And yeah. so he's got reference up here on his easel yes. somewhere. Right. And he's seeing what's going to be reflecting at that angle. It's like right. a cue ball. It go, bounce off to here and what's he going to be seeing? Right. You can actually, so you can, yeah, you can actually see a yep. little subtlety in here. I see it. Because yeah. the chrome is a little gray. This is a master painter. 
Yeah. And it's unfortunately he, they didn't get the recognition as Fitz and Van, but they were equally talented. And where where was he? Graphic house? No, this was Skidmore Serration. Skidmore Serration. And the okay. artist was John Ball. That's a, that's a cool piece. And I, this this is the, the, one of the most iconic images that I own. And this is the uh, Rapid Transit Chrysler uh, Plymouth, uh, uh, Plymouth Plymouth Division. Plymouth. Okay. This is the poster. So oh. this this actually is extremely large, and this is when Plymouth did the. Uh, they're called cartoon or action uh, imagery, and they did it for two years. And this is one of the most iconic images from that period. And this, is, again, was done by a Detroit artist, David Beasley, and it's out of a New Center Studios. But just the, if you take a step back, sure. you could see the control that these artists had. They could, they could do that or this, and they were all capable so the level of talent was so high and so competitive that it was a very narrow small group that could compete at this level and what's important about this these two especially the this these two images have become so iconic for muscle cars that the, these are iconic images of cars that are that are f followed by Mopar people Got it. Yeah. I have two friends in Ohio that would love to own this poster. Yeah. This, um, this is isn't this the, the poster. This is the illustration. This is the real. This is the real illustration. Right. Um, that was, became was this, the poster. Was this the era of the uh, cartoon and the Roadrunner? Yes. Um, Road, this is the Roadrunner and and the Scat Pack. Scat Pack. Okay. Yeah. Scat Pack was Dodge Roadrunner, but this is extremely rare. But what a great name. The rapid transit system. Right. Love it. Yeah. What the interesting thing about this was they had to come up with a campaign because uh, Plymouth and Dodge did not have the money to compete with Ford and oh. Chevrolet in terms of their advertising budget. So they took a leap of faith and took the car out of context. And it and it be this this right here is such an iconic image of the muscle car era yes. that it's become uh, to, were so recognizable. So it was a really a leap of faith by Chrysler, Dodge, Jim Hanna, the creative director, right. and uh, e I think it was named uh, Easley, and th they were the art directors, and they came up with this campaign that is is legendary in car collecting for car collecting. Yeah, yeah. and yet and also a, a phenomenal illustration. Right, phenomenal, phenomenal. It's great. All right, Jim, now we're switching here a little bit. We're going to talk about technical aspects. And this particular one is a technically illustrated interior of a right. car. Correct. Uh, basically, these two pictures or these two automotive illustrations illustrate to me the talent level again, because this right here is a technically like a technical illustration because this has to be technically and engineeringly correct. And by that means he worked the artist, which is CH Bills, works off a, uh, uh, a photograph, an engineering photograph, and then he recreates and paints. And I want you to take the time to notice the, the indication of carpeting, uh, yes. perfor uh, the perforation the of waffle the pattern, waffle pattern, and all the gauges have the correct uh, identification. The mirror has actually got a reflection. So this actually is a three-dimensional illustration. Very, very few people could be at this level. He was a, this was C.H. Bills, and he was an interior specialist. He had a very interesting career. He started in Chrysler as a designer, then he went on to illustration, and then he did boats, Chris Craft boats. Okay. So uh, he's. Uh, and I know, I happen to know for a fact that these guys would take that photograph and do a penciling. Right. All pencil drawing. Right. And then would go back to engineering. Right. And a few days later would come back with little marks on it Absolutely saying correct. change this, lower that, move this. Right. So and then they'd paint what it. Gear the, what gear the uh, yeah. gear ship should be in. Yep. Or, or this is the typical where the uh, uh, 
Uh, turn signal? No, turn signal should be. So there were many people that worked on this, but it starts with a penciler yes. who uses an uh, engineering drawing. Yes. So this is, this, 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 then we're moving over here, which is a total opposite, but still an incredible pen and ink. This is Chevrolet. This is Jimmy Jackson. And this is a newspaper ad for Corvette. Chevrolet 57 Chevrolet convertible. <laughs> and, you know. Yes, this is the announcement for it. And and this is a style that was very influenced by Chevrolet. And it's called the negative space here. There's nothing here. But you get one chance at this. And if you make a mistake, you're done. And it has people in it. It has gesturing. So this is a fine example of that crosshatch pen and ink. This is a very good example. And this is for black and white advertising. Hey, black and white advertising. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it was be a newspaper. Yeah, I would assume that too. Yeah. So, but these two uh, illustrations show you the talent level again, and and the variety that the artists had to have. They were all specialists in a way. Absolutely, and the talent level here is interesting. I mean, there's no whiteout used here. No. You got, you you drew that line, and it had to be right the first time. Right. And that goes back to the starting with a penciler. So the penciler had 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 all this penciled in, and then they went in with a with a you know a yeah. crow pen or whatever, and to do that. And the grill here is just it's phenomenal. And this is completely without a computer. I love this it. This is pre-computer, yeah, no is electronics at all. Pen and ink and paper. Right. And so these two examples again uh, show you that level of. Uh, of craftsmanship and artistic talent that this city was offering. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jim. Well, now, Jim, you've got two more examples. Right. This particular one I find interesting because it was done at the 20 year anniversary of the Camaro. Right. And they hadn't done uh, painted cars like they used to do mm -hmm. in years. Mm -hmm. But the art director decided this was a great way to announce this particular vehicle. And this was part of a gatefold and the spread art, which we don't have, right. was a iconic fo uh, an iconic drawing of a front view of the Camaro with both doors open that like was it was going to fly. Well, and it was, it was a, a showstopper in Larry, the magazine. Larry, uh, Larry Conley was yes. the art director. And the artist is... Uh, Don Whelan, McNamara Studios. Uh, the this is just a superb a handling of a very difficult subject. Yes. The, the, this isn't glamour, but he made it glamorous. And this is uh, just from, by the light direction. Yeah, the light direction, the sensitivity he brought to this is really, really superb. And for from a collector standpoint, this these are the images that no one saves. Everyone saves the car, yes. but to sh really show what Detroit is, these these are two examples of of the of high high level. Of art because this this is Don Whelan and it's McNamara and this was a, a technical illustrator named Cal Hecton and this is a sample that he did but just the lighting it, it, the sensitivity of the lighting coming up and lighting the block much like he did on the handle here and on the brake drum it's got the same sensitivity so outside of being able to understand sheet metal, they understood the direction of light, the, the chrome, look at the chrome here. That's very sensitive and it's very hard to do. Now, if anyone knows anything about an engine, they're not this beautiful. <laughs> and, and this this is it depends who you ask. You yeah, ask a been, gearhead, it's yeah, beautiful. A gearhead, I'm sorry, it would be, <laughs> but in terms of, of making a very interesting, yes. they understood the media. They mastered the media. They understood light, as you can see, like just the little touches right there and here. Look at the gold going in there to the silver. Everything about so, it. Everything about it is great. You met, you touched on something I want to bring up. Go right ahead. He did this as a sample. Right. One of the things that these artists would do, as photographers would do, mm -hmm. if they had an idea in their head of a look or a style, they would spend their own time to do a sample, mm -hmm. maybe a week, a month, who knows. And they would present that to the people who are trying to make decisions for the next year's style or look. And so th this, this was a sample. Right. And by sample, meaning you're presenting your work because it was a competitive market yes. and, it, and it, it, it revolved every year. You had to come up with something new and, and present to solve the problem for what, what was going to come next year. So it was a constant cycle of work at a high level. 
And let's give a compliment to the uh, f uh, to the client on this right. one. Yes, they were taking a chance. Absolutely. To do a painted system, a right. painted ad instead right. of a photograph, and they did it, and it, it's beautiful. Yeah, and and like you said, this is an iconic ad now by all by all the Camaro people. You, you just caught the doors open or the wings. It's a great shot. It's a great shot. So all right, thank this is a good one. We yeah. got one more to talk okay, about. Okay, one more. All right, Jim, now we're going to take a step even further back in time to De a, a, a Detroit illustration for sure with a futuristic background. It looks like around 1937, 19, uh, No, 1929. Tw no, 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 okay. no, 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 I think it's uh, uh, 1930s. I, I think uh, for sure it's the 30s. 30s. Yeah. And this is Radabon, who was out of Detroit. He actually did uh, motor, he was known for his futuristic art. And then he came to the uh, New Center Studios. Yeah. And this is one, one of his catalogs. And the interesting thing was, he did it by frisket and airbrush, which is opposed to the this, which, which is a gouache. Okay, so that's real painting. Yeah, real painting. And this is an airbrush. Right. And I know he, uh, Radabaugh, had a uh, car almost cartoon column in many newspapers, syndicated in many. Cl closer, the closer we are, or the closer something, something like that. About the future. Ran in the Detroit Free Press for many years, and, and other papers too. Right, and that's a neat one. Yeah, and, and this what? this is a pr probably the prize because this is a, in the twenties, and it's a very Edward Hopper, and this was done in Detroit by an artist, and this is a real truck, and it's just an absolute classic look. And I think it's about in the 20s, late 20s. But the lighting and the handling of a truck, it's the bridge back here. The depth of this picture is superb. It, it's, it's a true painting. And this is where the band REO Speedwagon got their name. Absolutely correct. All right, great. Well, uh, Jim, you know, we've really seen a, a, a plethora of interesting art here. And we're really happy that you let us view it. Well, I'm glad you got to come. Uh, I, I'm, I like to share it and let people see it because it doesn't belong to me. It's getting, it's more important that people see it and understand what it was and where it came from. I get it. Many collectors feel that way and that's what we like about this show. And the show's about some of the stories about how this stuff is found and how it's preserved. If you have any questions for Jim or myself, you can always contact uh, my, me uh, initially at uh, bctv, the collectors at gmail.com. And uh, if you have a collection you want to talk about, we'd, I'd be more than happy to have you on the show. Thanks.